All right, so I just wanted to give a little bit of a preface to the clip that I'm about to show. The opening lines are regarding um, my wife and me buying Apple Watches. We got my dad an Apple Watch like a year ago, and uh, he loves it. And so at the beginning, he's joking about he he's talking about him wanting to be the only one with an Apple Watch because he loves Apple Watches so much. Um, so if you have an Apple Watch, you can comment below and let us know maybe what you recommend, but we're, we're really considering getting Apple Watches. The rest of the video is concerning the movie Eight Mile that I've recently watched because my dad mentioned that it was a great movie and it, it was, you know, there are moments of greatness in it or whatever. He mentioned it in the same sentence as Purple Rain, which for him is like a big deal. It's, it's a really, really great movie. So I scored it rather unfavorably, but throughout this four minute conversation with my dad, he makes a very good case for the movie Eight Mile. And it, he made me look at it a different way. So I just wanted to share it because it's an interesting insight into, into the movie. And it's just kind of fun to have a discussion about that movie and what it means for certain people and why it sort of remained part of the lexicon. Anyways, that's enough of a preface. Check it out. Why is it so hard for you to share something that you love? <laughs> Let's get into that. Put it this way. I forbid you both from buying an Apple Watch. Okay. Oh, well, there's, there's our decision. You shall, you shall decree it. Why? We watched 8 Mile. And I we want to know right why did. Why did you lie to us about 8 Mile? You didn't like it? It didn't blow me away. Well, but the ending is spectacular. Maybe you were drunk when you watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and the other thing is, is you have to see it because it's a cultural touchstone. I mean, everybody, you know, they make references to 8 Mile. You just I haven't reading. seen it. Well, you watched it without reading me. something. I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, Purple Rain. You know, it's his Purple Rain. Well, it's not as good as Purple Rain, at least the music. But I don't know. I just liked it. I don't know. I was expecting more of, like, his background struggle story. You know, I don't know. I guess I would built it up in my head because I hadn't seen it in 20 years. You know? Well, I mean, it was, it was his background struggle story. I know, but I felt like it was all very surface level. You know? It was like his mom was a piece of shit. He had, like, a daughter, his ex-girlfriend... And then there's a new girlfriend who also sucks, and she's, like, just cheating on him with other people. Maybe, yeah. maybe I was unfair to the movie. <laughs> I mean, it's the whole Rocky thing. He doesn't give up. He keeps yeah. trying. And the reason he wins the contest at the end is because they can't hurt him anymore, you know? He's in the... Okay, that's he's reached, true. He's reached the mountaintop. That's they say true. About, oh, my they God. Maybe what? everything that I thought was a lie. There, that's true. There is like that whole aspect where he he talks about himself living in the trailer park, and he's like, "You guys don't, you guys can't talk shit about me anymore because there's nothing left to say." That was a yeah, pretty exactly. powerful moment. Maybe the drugs yeah. dead into my reaction to Eight Mile. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's the Godfather. I'm just I don't know, and it's kind of cool because at the very end, the other guy in the rap contest says really horrible things about Eminem and Eminem's mother and it's all true, you know, yeah. and he just fires back and says, yeah, I admit it. But, yeah. So, That's so I funny. don't know. I mean, I'm not saying he's the second coming of Jesus Christ, <laughs> but I can tell you that, um, he you has... know, Martin Luther, Martin Luther King called it carrying the cross, you know, they just keep tearing and tearing and tearing and tearing yeah. and tearing away at you. Your family, your, you know, they just beat yeah. you up. They beat up all your friends. And finally, there's nothing left. And he called it reaching the mountaintop, you know, where it's like nobody can hurt you anymore. That's pretty interesting. You're, you're just not capable of letting human beings hurt you anymore. You, yeah. He thought it was a real, I mean, it was the work It was the work of, well, he was very religious. But anyway, so. <laughs> Why do you know that he has an Oxycontin tattoo? All right. The last time we were in Vegas, <laughs> you guys were all asleep. Okay. <laughs> this is scary. Yeah. And I just couldn't.
couldn't sleep that night. No, I, I, I actually read an article. It was like in Time or something about um, the plague of what do they call it? The pain killing plague. Opioid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, opioid. Yeah, opioid. Opioid. Yeah. And and one of the things they talked about was that you know it, it uh, that this was years ago, probably four or five years ago. But they mentioned that you know I mean it became like the drug of choice for a ton of people. Yeah. And he was one of them. So. Interesting. There you have it. If you want to see what I look like whenever my mind is actively being changed, that's what it looks like. I went from really not being impressed by that movie and just eh, kind of negative about it to actually considering it, considering bumping up that score. That shows the power of a good argument. That was really enjoyable. Totally flipped my thoughts on the movie. Stay safe.